I, I've been listening to the words spoken throughout the music and through the readings, and the sermon I prepared is a great sermon, and maybe you'll hear it someday. But um, it really doesn't fit in with the theme of what we've been hearing, God speaking to us today. And uh, usually when I prepare the words, I, I think hard and long about the theme to try to make it fit in, and for whatever reason this week, uh, that didn't happen. So you are going to get something that you will probably never get again. Jim Kent speaking extemporaneously on the gospel. Actually, the Holy Spirit speaking through me on the word. So when I heard the Old Testament lesson today that Frank read, the opening words just spoke to me, especially this time of year. We are in the summer, and we have had a lot of rain here in Maryland. But I have a lot of friends that live in the Midwest, and right now they are not getting much rain, and the crops are dying. The fields are brown, and that is going to have a long-term impact on a lot of people in the world, including those farmers. They are going to have brown fields and a very small harvest. In our VBS this week, we talked a lot about water. And the water we spoke of was certainly the water that comes from the sky. But more importantly, it was the water that flows from God's word. And as we heard God's word today, we are probably all shaken by things going on in our life, by the dry spells we all face, by the lack of crops maybe, by the lack of money maybe, by the lack of uh, friends maybe, by the lack of any number of things. There is a lot of lack in this world that makes sense. A lot of lack kind of doesn't make sense, but there is a lot of lack. And that lack is affects each one of us here today. And it affects everyone out in the world. But there's one thing we do not lack. We do not lack the gift of faith in our God, in his grace and his mercy that overflows into our lives. And that is what God is speaking about in all of these passages that we read today, in all of the beautiful music that our choir sang today. Isaiah writes, For as the rain and the snow come down from the heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be what goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. That's a promise from God. His word shall succeed for the thing he purposed. And his purpose is indeed to care for his creation, but even more, it is to care for you and me. It is to bring us back into his eternal presence. Yes, we live in a desert of sorts right now. We live in a time when we are troubled by any manner of things. And I'm no different than any of you. I read the news. I see what's going on. And it troubles me. My soul thirsts. <laughs> My soul thirsts for resolution to all of these problems. God promises resolution will come. This dryness that we all find is a result of the fall. It's not what God intended. When we read God's word, what did God intend when he created all things? After each and every day of creation, what did he say? He said, it is good. It is very good good. That's what God intended. But when Adam and Eve fell into sin, it became broken. 
And when a container is broken, it can't hold the good. When your water bottle breaks, it leaks, and that water drains all over the place. It can't do what it was intended to do. And we read right after the fall, God says this to Adam. He says, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till, the, till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. That's a result of the fall. Those thorns and those thistles, that's the brokenness we all live in today. But God has a promise for us, a promise that he will bring rain. He will bring snow, a living water that will flow, a living water that will nourish our hearts and our minds and our souls. God sent his son, Jesus, to be that living water, to quench that thirst that we all have for something more, to give us the gift of forgiveness of our sin, that sin which dries us up, which tears us apart. Jesus has given us that forgiveness through the living water of his life and his word as it flows from the cross. Jesus has given us the gift also of living water, the promise of eternal life. Isaiah writes what that promise is going to look like. It's a promise that we all have. He says, For you shall go out in joy, and you shall be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And in the great reversal that God promises us, he says, the thorn shall become a cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And I will make the name of the Lord an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is a picture from Isaiah of the reversal. Instead of those thorns that choke up, uh, choke up our dreams and our hopes, the thorns that choke us, of, you know, the world's cares that choke away the word of God, instead of those thorns, we'll become cypress trees to provide shade, to provide relief from the heat. Instead of the briar, we'll come up a myrtle, another beautiful tree, a tree of life that we all receive. In the book of Revelation, we see exactly what that picture is going to look like, don't we? Jesus promises us, or through his, his uh, apostle John, that there will be no more thirst. There will be no more hunger. All the worries that God gives us, or that we receive today through the sin in the world, all those worries are going to go away. We live in that promise today. Today, we are struggling. Today, we are enduring. But in our baptisms, in that water of baptism, God gives us the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit enables us to endure these trials, these tribulations, and all these things that are happening. And as Paul tells us, when we struggle, and do we struggle, what do we do? Abba, Father, we call out to God, our Heavenly Father, just like Jesus did. You know, on the night before he died, he was struggling. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, 
We read in the Gospel of Luke that sweat was dripping from him like blood as he knew what was going to happen. And that's exactly what Jesus did, was he cried out those same words that we cry out, Abba, Father. He says, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus endured because his Father, his Abba, gave him the strength to endure his time on the cross. And through that, we have been cleansed of all of our sin. And on the third day, when he rose from the dead to new life, he gave us the gift of eternal life. And today, we live in that promise. Yes, we are walking through that valley of the shadow of death right now. But you know who's with us? God is with us. He is with us every step of the way. And he has felt our pain. He has felt what we feel because he felt it in the death of his son. And he will lead us through. And he will bring us into that, that new and eternal promised land. That place where the thorn will be like a cypress and the briar shall be like a myrtle. And we will be there for all eternity, and it will be very good. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.